I would like to welcome you for Tea Time with Nana. And here is a sketch of my Nana that I did when I was 20 years old. And she's from Dublin, Ireland. And she was always asking questions during tea time all about the day, what we were learning in college, what we were learning in school. And tea time was a time of reflection. It was a time where often right about three to four o'clock in the afternoon, it was a time to reflect about the day that you had lived. And it was a time to reflect about what you were gonna make for dinner. And then in the mornings, especially on Saturdays, in the mornings, it was always mid morning, right before lunchtime, right after breakfast. So right around this time, she would want to have tea and reflect about the past week and reflect about how you were going to proceed with the week ahead. And it was a time to really just have something like a little pastry, homemade breads. So what I've done is I've made some bagels and you have something warm like toast. One of her favorites was making handmade um, artisan breads and poppy seed and banana bread and sourdough bread. And it was just so wonderful to have that warm bread straight out of the oven with butter and cream cheese and jelly, a jam that she had made. And then here's, she would often let me have a teacup. So I would drink out of this teacup. And this teacup is from Ireland. And she was from Dublin, Ireland. Here's the saucer. And then here's the matching teapot. So tea time is always a special time where you have unity, you have communication, you have an exchange and learn from each other. So one of the ways to have tea, you could have a tea strainer such as this and you put fresh herbs or tea leaves, things like that, and you pour hot water over the tea strainer. It fits in the cup just like this. And then when you're done with that, <clears throat> you have this where you place it right here on there. And then if you want to make more tea, you can just put it back on your cup and then you just set it here. Another way to have tea is to have a tea ball like this. And it has a little hook right here so that you could take your teapot and you hook it on like maybe the end of the, like the handle. So I put my tea ball in there and then, so that way the tea will be diffused in the hot water. So here's another way that I'm just gonna go like this, just to show you with the tea strainer, you just pour, the tea like that. So it goes through and strains, you let it steep. So this is what they call balik, and that's also Irish. It's balik china. It's very, very fragile, very thin china. So this is the sugar creamer. So you can use your sugar spoon. And it's important to have a spoon for your creamer, a spoon for stirring. 
stirring the, the sugar and the creamer in your tea. So I have here a little Balik creamer. So you could pour that in your teacup, for instance. And then you would want to stir, because you don't want to take your spoon and stir your tea. And then if you want more tea, then you have a wet spoon and you're going to put it in your sugar. You don't want to do that. <laughs> and you don't want to take that spoon and pass germs if you're having tea with other people. And then put the the your wet spoon in the sugar. So it's always important to have a spoon that's only your spoon that you stir with your tea. And then you have a separate spoon for the sugar to just take the sugar and put it in your tea. So that was a time that we would always talk about wisdom. She would share her wisdom of growing up in Ireland. And then her family, they moved to Edinburgh, Scotland. And then when she was 19 years old, she was sent off to America. And it was a painful time for her. They were what they, they were the Irish that were called the Black Irish and, and the Black Irish, they ha pretty much had black hair and a darker skin. They had more melanin in their skin. They worked in the farms. They worked as the nannies in the houses to help with the wealthy families. And that's what happened with her, her and her sister. And her sister was a year older and they were sent to America and sold as indentured servants by their family. And it was just the way of how things were done. And then her, my grandfather, so her husband and his brother were in love with my Nana and her sister. And they found them in America and bought their freedom and they worked in the Irish, they were Irish coal miners in Ireland, and they worked in the coal mine in the coal mines in Pennsylvania. So one of the things that I wanted to share is that many of the things that in history they don't get put in history books. And what's important is that we share our stories because many things will not be put in a history book. It's important to share our wisdom and to pass on that wisdom. And one of the best ways to do that is taking a time of reflection, a time of listening. And when you're having tea or coffee, whichever you prefer, or having you know homemade breads, and it's just a time of, it's like savory, you're, you're eating, you're smelling, you're listening, it gets into your cells. It helps with mental health. It helps with healthiness in families. It helps to create good communication with each other. And I cannot tell you the stories that I listened to when I was a little girl. And I thought, oh, this would never happen to me. And yet here I am, I'm gonna be 65 in April. And I cannot tell you the stories that I listened to from my Nana have helped me in being a parent, helped me in being a wife, a woman, and surviving the current events that have happened in my lifetime. And I learned many things in art history when I was in college in the 1970s that I never learned in, in my school in history. And so I would learn about things and my Nana would tell me things about what it was like for her through her lifetime. And sometimes she would cry because here she was passing on stories that were told to her from her family and passing on her life and her wisdom and experiences to her family, such as myself. And many of the things 
that I was learning in art history, then it validated what she was hearing, the stories that she heard and the life lessons that she was learning and the experiences that she was living. So she lived through World War I, World War II. She lived through pandemics and she was sent in the early 1900s during the Industrial Revolution. And there were many things that, that there's oppression and, 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 and so if you could listen to those stories, listen to that wisdom, and many of you have wisdom that you need to pass on. So this is your opportunity, especially now with the year of 2020, and now we're in the year of 2021. And there's so many crises that are happening, so many adjustments that we have to adapt to. How are we going to adapt? And that's what my Nana went through. There were crises that were happening in her current time. And, and it was like, how is she going to raise her children? How is she going to feed her children? So there was much wisdom that she had to figure out. And there's much wisdom that each of you are going to have to figure out. And so it's important to just sit down, not be stressed, really think clearly, breathe, have something. And we may not have a lot of money, but there's things that you could do to figure it out. There were things that my Nana had to figure out. She didn't have just the basics for a recipe. She had to figure out how am I gonna feed my children? And there were times with myself, I went through hardship raising my four children. I had to figure out how am I gonna feed them? How am I going to make this recipe when I don't have butter, for instance, or oil? And I learned to substitute. I learned to substitute with things like applesauce and I learned to grow a garden. My Nana taught me about gardening. So there's things that you could do. Like this last year, I have herbs in my garden. So I've made teas out of an herb that helps to build the immune system. So those are all things that are important. I wanted to show you another cup and it's a Balik tea cup. So I want you to just to think about how can you make things special in a time of crisis? How can you make it fun? How can you problem solve? And that's some of the things that my Nana taught me. One of the things that I was learning in art history, I also, learn like I'm an artist I love to do artwork and I've been doing artwork all my life and I, I learned how to do calligraphy when I was in college and so my Nana was talking to me about the importance of the calligraphers and and then she was talking about the University of Dublin and they have the Book of Kells so here she had gone to the University of Dublin and seen the Book of Kells and experienced and, and had seen the Book of Kells. And so she was passing on that knowledge and that history for me that I was learning in college only through textbooks and slide presentations. And she had actually lived that. So many of our stories, we it, it's all a part of history. I had an art history teacher. Her, her name was Mildred Walker. And she always said that history is always being made. And it's the artists who are always defining history, that are always defining an era. And, and it's not just artwork, like say this sketch or the artwork behind me, but it's the art of tea the art of communication, the art of calligraphy, the art of painting, the art of baking. There's so many arts. And throughout every time period, when we have a crisis, you start reflecting on 
on what happened in the past. And you see that there's a common thread. Like you think of the jazz era, for instance, there's a common thread with the clothing that people wore, the makeup that they wore, the jewelry that was created, the type of foods that they ate. You look at regions throughout the world, you look at the art of color in particular regions. And the reason why you see that is because, you know, there's a certain color in the rocks, there's a certain color in the native plants, there's a certain color when they made pigments out of berries. And so it's just really do your research and really listen to each other. And instead of seeing the differences and trying to um, try to make others like yourself, let others be who they are and really actively listen to the wisdom that they have to share and communicate, communicate with older family members, older friends with younger and middle-aged. And you find that you can learn so much. I learned so much from children. I've been, I started face painting when I put my oldest in preschool and she will, you know, she was born in 1983. And so I put her in preschool in 1986. And there's trends that I have noticed face painting children in the 80s, the 90s, you know, the early 2000, there's trends that are happening. And children, as I'm painting their faces, they're teaching me. And they would say things like, I want to be this. And, and, you know, and I would just say, okay, well, tell me about that. So I was learning from them. And many of the designs I painted it was a design that came up in the wisdom of that child. And, and then when they became that painted face, they took on that persona and for the day. So let's say it's a festival, some kind of art festival or, or a apple festival, and they took on that persona for the day. And that's something that um, you know, they're going to carry with them throughout their adulthood, that memory. So let's remember everything that we go through and learn from each other and take time to reflect, to problem solve, to figure things out, to reflect about the early part of the day, reflect about, about the end of the day so that we could sleep peacefully in the evenings plan and reflect about the upcoming week, adjust, always adjust, because sometimes we have plans and sometimes those plans don't work out. So thank you for having tea with me. And I look forward to seeing you soon.